pleased to have you here. We're going to hear about the father's point of view. Thank you. I'm told I have to stand behind the lectern in order for you to hear me, or at least in order for this thing to hear me. I would much rather be standing out there. But you could turn the microphone around. Only a wee bit, and apparently I should still be facing it, in which case I wouldn't be looking at you. Um, I am a hypnobirthing teacher. It's what I do with the whole of my life. I also, as well as teaching mothers <coughs> hypnobirthing, I teach people to be hypnobirthing teachers. And I have taught hundreds of women and therefore I get a very wide overview of a great many different units from their birth reports, which is a very privileged position. And you get a sort of feel of what's going on in different units in a way that maybe you don't if you're working in one particular unit. Um, and I would also like, if anybody wants to ever sit in on my class, you're more than welcome, call me or email me. Um, and it's lovely if people want to just sit in and find out a little bit more about hypnobirthing. So, I will read you a birth report first, very briefly. It was very difficult to choose for birth reports to bring today. And it said, It was a truly wonderful experience, all thanks to your course. I think of the first stage was two and a half hours and the second 30 minutes, followed by natural delivery of a placenta within 20 minutes after being left for an hour in between to spend time with our daughter. First baby. Isn't that fantastic? You know, I dance around with glee when I get birth reports like that. It makes me so happy. But um, hypnobirthing is a word which is generally used to talk about hypnotherapy for birth because it has become so well known. A few years ago, I would teach mothers who say, well, I've sort of heard of this, but I don't quite know what it's like. And now I get people coming to my class saying, my best friend said I had to go. In fact, four of them said I had to go. And my midwife said I had to come. And that's why I'm here. So the growth has been incredible. And fathers arrive at the course, I think it's often something like this. Before a woman's pregnant, she has this idea at the back of her mind that there's always a cesarean as a soft option. And then she gets pregnant and her hormones take over and sort of ease her towards a more natural route. And she realizes, does a bit of research and realizes that her cesarean is not a soft option. And then she gets the negative birth stories and she suddenly thinks, there's only one way out and it's going to be really, really painful. And then somebody mentions the magic word hypnobirthing, so she Googles because every pregnant woman spends their whole life Googling. <laughs> I do wonder how anybody ever managed to have a baby before there was Google, actually. Um, and then she tells her other half that she wants to do hypnobirthing, at which point he raises his eyes to heaven and says, what is she on to now? And if I object, she'll only burst into tears again. <laughs> And we've only just paid for the NCT class, and why do we have to pay for this too? And then, what's even worse, he discovers that he's supposed to come too. <laughs> and that's the scenario which people walk through the door. It's written all over their faces, apart from one or two fathers who come in with little halos saying, I was the one who found out about it first. <laughs> but the vast majority are incredibly skeptical, and why shouldn't they be? I have no problem with skepticism. Um, it works, I know it works, you don't have to believe. Um, you don't believe in gravity, it works, hypnobirthing works. So, the role of the father, in a way they're the most important people at the hypnobirthing class because they can make such a difference to the mother. And the role is to keep her in a calm, safe space. And I don't just mean uh, low lights, candles, soft music. I mean mentally and emotionally, much more importantly. Keep all those interruptions away keep the negative um, words away. Uh, one, far, one mother I taught, I think she was first baby, hour and a half, no drugs, no pain, no tearing. And somebody remarked to her husband how lucky she was. And he said, no, she wasn't, she practiced. <laughs> she utterly focused and she practiced. So to keep her in a calm, safe space and to prompt her during <coughs> contractions, surges, rushes, waves, whatever you choose to call them, keep her mind focused on her visualizations. And I'm going to speak now as I would in a hypnobirthing class, so it's not technical, but it is the rationale bit, which I'm possibly slightly going over what was said before, but it is so important, particularly for fathers, to know that there's a logic behind it. And there is a very sound logic behind hypnobirthing. They come thinking it's going to be sort of airy, fairy, spaced out thing, and you present them with the logic. And it's such a relief, because we live in a society where we're used to logic. In fact, um, it was Einstein said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift, 
and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honours the servant and has forgotten the gift. And it is so very true. But they're used to having a rational explanation. You give it to that, <coughs> from that, and the conscious mind is happy and it goes away in a corner and says, that's all right then, and then you can get on with the real work.